listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. We're a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof over your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. And then remind you, if you ever have any home or finance-related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. RonSiegelRadio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800 306-1990, 800-306-1990. Today is National Dad Gum That's Good Day. Yeah. It is what it is. National Horse Protection Day, Minnesota Day, Pig Day, Self-Injury Awareness Day. Yeah, National Fruit Compote Day and Peanut Butter Lovers Day. Yeah, that's our celebrations of this date. Got to enjoy some of those. Let's take a look and see what the markets are doing this morning. Yeah, the Dow, Dow Jones Industrial Average up 677 points as I speak to you this hour. S&P up 90. NASDAQ up 336 points. Oil looks like it's pretty flat right now. Not a whole lot of activity, uh, apparently, in the oil market. We'll look and see what else that has. How does that translate to just a little number that might be of interest to you? We're going to look at that right here, right now. $2.72 is the national average for one gallon of gasoline. If you'd like to pay $2.38... You can't do that in Calizuela. That would be Mississippi. Moving west. How about $2.42? Yeah, that would be Texas. Two ninety eight. dollars Getting closer. That's Arizona. Three forty seven. dollars Hawaii. Yeah, Calizuela. We lead the way. $3.69. Three sixty nine dollars for a gallon of gasoline right here in Calizuela. Unbelievable. Uh, the the uh, bond market eh, gone up a little bit. It was down a bit earlier today. Now it's up a little bit. We're watching that one for you to see what happens in the 10-year treasury. So we will continue watching that. That great broadcast lined up for you today. I thought I would spend some time. You know, we're right here, middle of early tax season. Also watching a lot of other things going on. But you know something? One of the things that is always tried, always true, and one of the topics I get the most questions about on Ron Siegel Radio, either by text, email, direct messaging, private messaging, any of the things you want, no longer on Twitter, right, is about credit. So I figured today's broadcast, we're going to talk about credit scores. More importantly, FICO scores, not credit scores, FICO scores. So maybe we can start off with what is a FICO score versus what is a credit score. Because not all credit scores are FICO scores. For over 25 years, FICO scores have been the industry standard for determining a person's credit risk. Today, more than 90% of top lenders use FICO scores to make faster, fairer, and more accurate lending decisions. Other credit scores can be very different from FICO scores, sometimes by as much as 100 points. Yeah. It is what it is. What's in a name? When it comes to FICO scores versus other credit scores, the answer is 
a lot. FICO scores, again, 90% of top lenders use that to make decisions. As of right now, the government-sponsored entities for home loans only will accept FICO scores. They will not accept FACO scores, Vantage scores, other forms of credit scores. Why? Because lenders know that they're getting what they're getting when they review a FICO score. FICO scores are trusted to be a fair, reliable measure of whether a person will pay back their loan on time. By consistently using FICO scores, lenders take on less risk and you get faster, fairer access to the credit you need and can manage. FICO scores use unique algorithms to calculate their credit risk based on the information contained in your credit reports. Many other companies design their credit scores to look like a FICO score. The mathematical formulas they use can vary greatly. Unfortunately, the methods used by these other companies can lead to credit scores that are very different from your FICO score, and even just a few points difference can make significant cons or have significant consequences on your terms and rates, maybe even costing you hundreds or even thousands of dollars. So maybe you want to understand how FICO scores are calculated. No one's going to tell you exactly, but here's the basis of it. So they use a lot of different data. They do not store a FICO score. So if you go to try and get a FICO score right this minute, it may not be the same as the FICO score you get 10 minutes from now because the, no, the score itself is not stored. The algorithm is stored, and it calculates a score every time it is requested on what they call a hard pull. So there are hard pulls and soft pulls. If you try and get a, if you go on my favorite location, myfico.com, you can get your FICO scores for all three of the major bureaus, and that will not count against your score. That is called a soft pull. You get it, you pull it, it's called a soft pull. Doesn't affect your score. If you're going to have me pull it, or anyone that is a, like I, you know I lead a lending team, so if anyone on our team pulls it, that's called a hard pull, and may have a minimal impact on your score. Now if you do a lot of hard pulls, that's gonna have more of an impact on your score. Once or twice, not a big deal. So, scores calculated, many pieces of data, the data is grouped into five categories. The categories are payment history. That counts for 35% of your score. Amounts owed, that counts for 30% of your score. Length of credit history, that's 15% of your score. New credit, 10% of your score. That's where those inquiries come into. And credit mix, that's 10% of your score. So let's talk about each of those just a little bit. Your FICO score is considered both positive and negative information in your credit report. Late payments will lower your FICO scores, but establishing or reestablishing a good track record of making payments on time will raise your score. And you know the importance of credit, of, of credit categories. The FICO scores are unique, just like you. They're calculated based on the five categories I talked about. The importance of the categories can be different. For example, Scores for people who have been using credit long will, who have not been using credit long, will be calculated differently than those with a longer credit history. In addition, as the information in your credit report changes, so does the evaluation of these factors in determining your FICO scores. Your credit report and FICO scores evolve frequently. Because of this, it's not possible to measure the exact impact of a single factor in how your FICO score is calculated without looking at your entire report. Even the levels of importance shown in the FICO score chart that I mentioned are for general population and may be different for different credit profiles. That's why there's variances to the FICO score and the FACO score because we know approximately what the algorithm looks like, but nobody knows exactly what it is. Your FICO score is calculated only from the information in your credit report. However, lenders may look at many things when making a credit decision, such as your income, how long you've worked at your job, and the kind of credit you are requesting. Income is not on your FICO report. 
How long you've been at your job, not on your FICO report. So what categories are considered when calculating your FICO score? Payment history is 35%. I told you that. The first thing any lender wants to know is whether you've paid past credit accounts on time. This helps a lender figure out the amount of risk it will take on when extending you credit. This is the most important factor in the FICO score. Amount owed. Having credit accounts owing money on them does not necessarily mean you're a high-risk borrower with a low FICO score. However, if you're using a lot of your available credit, this may indicate that you are overextended, and banks might interpret this to mean that you are at a higher risk of defaulting. Length of credit history, that's 15% in general. A longer credit history will increase your FICO scores. However, people who haven't been using credit for long may have high FICO scores, depending on how the rest of the credit report looks. Your FICO scores take into account how long your credit accounts have been established, including the age of your oldest account, the age of your newest account, and the average age of all of your accounts, how long specific credit accounts have been established, how long it's been since you used certain accounts. So that is the area there, 15%. Don't close credit cards. Unless you've got a really, really good reason, don't close them because that's going to hurt the aging process. You want to keep them old, like me. Credit mix, 10%. FICO scores will consider your mix of credit cards, retail accounts, installment loans, finance company accounts, mortgage loans. Don't worry, it's not necessary to have one of each. In fact, the ideal scenario, and again, you don't have to have this, one mortgage loan, two car loans, three credit card loans. Don't have to have it, but that's where the numbers come out. We're going to continue our conversation about FICO scores and your credit. When we come back, you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. We may also get into, not we may, we will get into a discussion this morning as well. Whoops, i got to figure out where the heck it went to. There it is. What are the benefits of a 20% down payment? All that and more, you can reach me anytime. Our offer number 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numero one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Estate Radio is hosted by local real estate and finance expert, Ron Siegel. The purpose of this show is to help consumers understand what's really going on in our local real estate market. We're teaching you the why and the how to, so you'll always be one step ahead of everyone else. Whether you need to sell your home for top dollar, refinance and save money, or even buy a bargain in Southern California, Ron Siegel can help. Call Ron directly at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Take advantage of speaking with Ron anytime you're entering a real estate transaction. Having someone who can answer all of your questions that truly cares about you and your family's best interest is priceless. Call Ron Siegel today and you'll be glad you did. 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or you can visit realestateradiowithron.com for more info. Blue Water Credit Repair is the industry leader in fixing bad credit. Did you know a 40-point increase in your credit score can save you $40,000 on a home loan and $4,000 on a car loan? You deserve good credit and peace of mind. Take the first step today and go to bluewatercredit.com and register for a free consultation from one of their credit repair experts. That's bluewatercredit.com. Trimming of your retirement does not include losing your house. However, due to today's lower stock market, higher medical bills, and taxes, many retirees face this very problem. This is why it is necessary that you, as a baby boomer, considering retirement within the next 10 years, understand reverse mortgages and what one could do for you or your parents. A reverse mortgage could make it possible for you or your parents to travel, buy a second home, or start a new business. For more information about reverse mortgages, just call our off-air number at 1-800-306-1990. 
That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit realestateradiowithron.com and click the free workshop button. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate below 3.5% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $300,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,300 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L, LendingTeam.com. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed to NMLS ID 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Are you paying rent because you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you paying rent because you don't believe you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? At Siegel Lending Team at RonIsMyLender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at RonIsMyLender.com. Again, RonIsMyLender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037. RonIsMyLender.com. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. 1990, the Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next loan, Geneva, they've got the programs and the products. You've got the call, the phone, make it. Or text My Home Mortgage, no spaces, My Home Mortgage to 79564. My Home Mortgage to 79564 and get that new mortgage. What is going on in the world and the markets today? Uh, let's see where we are. Let me check on it for you. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of this on my phone, right? S&P 500 now up 633 points. NASDAQ up 322. We've got the S, uh, S&P 500 up almost 90 points. The 10-year Treasury down one basis point. It's been l- jumping around a bit today. Mortgage-backed securities down nine basis points. Uh, they, it means interest rates continue to rise just a little bit. Why is all of this happening? That is what you want to know, so we tell it to you. Well, we got a bunch of information. Stocks, uh, they are up. I told you that already. The PMI, Manufacturing Index for February, decreased to 58.6 from January's 59.2, above expectations of 58.5. ISM Manufacturing Index measures the health of the manufacturing sector in the U.S. came in at 60.8 for the month of February, which above the expectations of 58.9. Numbers don't mean anything, but anything above 50 is good. We've got, uh, let's see, construction spending increased by 1.7% in January, exceeding the expectations of 0.8%. I wonder if that's just inflation because lumber is way up. December's figure was revised higher from 1% to 1.1%. A lot going on there. And one of the things we're going to have to really be careful of as we move forward is what is happening in some of the, uh, on, on the bonds. Because I've told you before, the big arch enemy of bonds is inflation. And whether we have inflation or not, the numbers are going to come in showing that we have inflation. Why? Well, if you remember this time last year, right, we had a very, very strong economy January, February, extremely small economy January, fe- February. But then all of a sudden we shut it off the middle of March. So a lot of the numbers are going to, they, they, if you remember, they, you know, they just fell off a cliff. So now, even if you go back halfway, you're still going to find that. You know something? Even if you go back halfway, it's going to show a major increase. So think about this. And just, just from numbers. I'm not telling, talking about any specific number, just from a number standpoint. So if we were at 100 last year of anything, and we fell off that cliff and went down to 25, 
Yikes, it hurts, right? And that's kind of what happened with our economy, right? We shut 40 million people automatic, you know, overnight unemployed. So that 100 went to 25. Now if you had a 50% increase, that's 12 and a half. So now you're at 37 and a half, still way off that 100. But the headlines, they're not going to look at that. They're just going to say, wow, that's way up. Well, that's what we might be looking at for inflation also because we fell off that cliff. Now the number's way up. What does it really mean? Not as much as you might think. So we just want to keep that in mind so you have that understanding of what's going on with numbers, right? Because you're going to get some of this bogus number coming up, and it's not going to be as meaningful. It's not going to be as accurate as it might be, otherwise be, just because of the way the market is right now. So I'm just going to share that with you, a little head uh, insight from Ron Siegel Radio. That is the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next mortgage, Geneva Financial, they've got the programs and the products. My Home Mortgage. Text My Home Mortgage to 79564. My Home Mortgage, 79564. So let's uh, get back to our conversation. We were chatting about FICO scores, what they mean to you. Do they matter? Why they matter? How they are derived? And we're going to get into the idea in a little bit today, how you can increase your FICO score. It is very important to have a good FICO score. And as I share with you all the time, check yours. I get mine right here on my handy little device, right? I have a family plan. I pay for it. It's not like it's something given to me. I don't get paid to advertise it. But I do pay for the family plan on myfico.com. So I can see all the time what's happening to my score, what is driving my score. When a balance on my account drops and a balance on my account increases, right? I try to get all my accounts paid off before the statement closing date, but it never quite happens, right? I do, as I've shared with you, I go in three or four days before the statement closing date, look at what the balance is, send that money right over to them. But between the time I send it to them and the tie, and I, I, I do mine different than a lot of people. I'm going to share, share with you how I do mine. I don't look at the balance on my, on my account. I say, here's the credit limit. Here's the available. Subtract the limit, for the, the, limit the, the available from the limit. That tells me what the balance is and what is pending. And that's what I send. Because I know those other items are going to hit there, and I'm hoping they don't hit there between the time I send out the check and the statement closing date. I want to get as much paid as I possibly can. So let's talk about that real quick. What is the best way to maximize your FICO score through that payment process? Very simple. You need to look for on your, on your credit card statement, on every one of your credit card statements, Look for two very important dates. You want to look at the statement closing date and the payment due date. Statement closing date, payment due date. The payment due date doesn't really change. It's might, you know, it might be a day or so here and there, but it's generally going to be about the same. So go into your online banking service and set up a minimal payment. If you use the card a lot and you got high high minimums, you know, you might say, okay, I want to send them $100 every month. So it arrives the day before, two days before that statement closing date. You might do it if you're, if you've got a lower balance, maybe $35, $50, $100. doesn't matter what the number is, but whatever your normal minimum payment shows as being due on that statement, just set that up as a recurring payment, right? You may want to even set it up for the payday that you have right before that payment due date. Just have it go out that same day. That way you're never late. Remember what I told you, payment history, 35% of your FICO score. So if you look at that 35% and you're all, you've got that, that set up on a auto pay, well, you don't have to worry about remembering it. So it's nice and simple. Now let's go back to the, the, more, the one that's a little bit more work. You're going to go online about four to five days before your statement closing date. Now, we're dealing with another different date, right? I told you there are two important dates. You had the payment due date and you have the statement closing date. So now we're talking about the statement closing date. 
You're going to go online, you know, maybe three day, three business days before the statement closing date. Okay, so if the statement closing date is the 10th of the month, you're going to go on there somewhere between the 5th and the 7th, depending upon weekends, right? And you're going to look and you're going to say, okay, my balance is $400, and remember, I told you how to do it, okay? You're going to go and you're going to subtract from the credit limit, subtract your available, because that might be more than the balance, right? So say you've got a $1,000 limit and you've got 600 available, but maybe the balance is only 300 That's telling you that the difference in there is what's pending. So I go and I say, okay, 1000 minus 600 400 that's what I make as my payment to go out right away. And I want that to arrive at least one to two days before the statement closing date. Because I want my balance to be at the absolute minimum point when that statement closes. Why? Because that's generally when the companies report. Most of them report right after the statement closing date. Now, you may say, Ron, I pay my balance in full every month. Wonderful. You just did it wrong. Why? So, if you remember I said the amount owed, that counts for 30% of your score. Well, they only know the amount owed on the dates that are reported. Most credit card companies, a revolving credit, they don't report all the time. They might report once a month. Most of them, that's what they do. And they generally report right after the statement closing date. And the way that 30% is calculated is it's based on credit utilization. So let's go back to that same $1,000 card. That $1,000 card, and if you've used up $600 of it, that's a 60% utilization. Not good, not bad, right? You're going to break it. 50% 50 is basically neutral. You hurt your credit at 70%. even hurt it even more at 100%. There's enhancements at 30% and at 10, below 30 and below 10%. But I digress. So you're at that 60% credit utilization. Now, you get the statement, and it says $600 due, and you pay it the next day. They've already reported. It's too late. You've got a 60% utilization. Now, the way I shared with you is to make that get in ahead of time is you make that payment beforehand, so now you've got a zero or maybe a 1% or 2% utilization. Well, if you have 1% or 2%, that's below the 10% I told you. That is an enhancement to your FICO score. Under 30% is an enhancement to your FICO score. Remember, I just told you those things. So even if you have a, and it works on all numbers, so right? You have a $10,000, maybe you're a business person. You have a $10,000 limit. You spend 9000 every month because you've got maybe recurring bills. Right, So now you've got a 90% utilization. You pay it off every month, but the bureaus never know. So you're always hurting your FICO score because you've always got that maximized utilization. Pay it three or four days earlier, and you've got the exact opposite. You've got a maybe a 10% utilization with a high balance. Maybe it's an old card. You're doing a lot better. So think about that. That's why that, that is the correct way of paying your credit card bills. To, and the reason I say correct way, it's the way to maximize your FICO score. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, we're going to chat about what are the benefits of a 20% down payment. We'll continue our discussion on FICO scores, all that and more. You can reach me anytime, our off-air number. 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Radio. No longer on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Hi, we're here with Ron Siegel, the host of Real Estate Radio. 
Ron, welcome to the studio. Give us insight as to what your show is all about. Hi, Eric. Thanks for having me. Thanks for asking me that question. The reason we developed Real Estate Radio is right now there is an abundance of misinformation out there. So Real Estate Radio is a show designed to give Southern California a focal point for their real estate knowledge, as well as a place to go just in case they might need anything real estate related. So how are you helping people? That's actually pretty simple. People need advice. So it really doesn't matter who you are. If you have any real estate questions, we're here to help. Whether you're buying a home, selling, you're experiencing a loan modification, short sale, foreclosure, there are a lot of things going on in this marketplace. How can people get a hold of you? Real easy. All you have to do is call. The number is 1-800-306-1990. Press option one. Interesting times in the market right now. Where do you think the markets are going from here? That's a great question. All I can say is this. The housing market came down one house at a time, and what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to build it one house, one family at a time. So the best thing that anyone can do is access the free advice that we really want to give you. And to do that, you simply need to call me. The number is 1-800-306-1990, option one. I'd really love to help. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Are you paying rent because you think you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you renting because you don't believe that you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? The Siegel Lending Team at RonIsMyLender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at RonIsMyLender.com. Again, RonIsMyLender.com, licensed under NMLS 217037. Ron is my lender.com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate below 3.5% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $300,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,300 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L, LendingTeam.com. Rate subject to change without notice. License to NMLS ID 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Seal Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Seal Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990, the real time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Seal Radio. Text SLT Home Digest to 79564. SLT Home Digest to 79564. Find that dream home before someone else does. The Digest tells you what the market knows about your property, what the, I'm sorry, what the county recorder knows about your property, what the market thinks about your property. And it's yours. Compliments of your friends at Ron Siegel Radio. What are the benefits of a 20% down payment is our subject this morning. If you're thinking of buying a home this year, you may be wondering how much money you need to come with up with for your down payment. Many people may think it's 20% of the loan to secure a mortgage. While there are plenty of lower down payment options available for qualified buyers who do not want to put 20% down, it's important to understand how a larger down payment can have great benefits as well. The truth is, there are many programs available that allow you to put it down as little as 3.5%, which can be a huge benefit to those who want to purchase a home sooner rather than later. Those who have served our country may also qualify for a Veteran Affairs Home Loan, VA loan, and may not need a down payment. These programs really cut down the savings time for many potential buyers, enabling them to start building family wealth sooner. Get in the game soon. That gets you to start building that family wealth. You don't need to wait for that 20%. 
four reasons why putting 20% down is a good plan if you can afford it. Number one, your interest rate may be lower. A 20% down payment versus a 3 to 5% down payment shows your lender you are more financially stable and not a large credit risk. The more confident your lender is in your credit score and your ability to pay your loan, the lower the mortgage interest rate they'll likely be willing to give you. Number two, you'll end up paying less for your home. The larger down payment, the smaller your loan amount will be for your mortgage. If you're able to pay 20% of the cost of your new home at the start of the transaction, you'll only pay interest on the remaining 80%. If you put down 5%, the additional 15% will be added to your loan and will accrue interest over time. This will end up costing you more over the lifetime of your home loan. Number three, your offer will stand out in a competitive market. In a market where many buyers are competing for the same home, sellers like to see offers come in with 20% or larger down payments. The seller gains the same confidence as the lender in this scenario. You are seen as a stronger buyer with financing that's more likely to be approved. Therefore, the deal will be more likely to go through. Number four, you won't have to pay private mortgage insurance. What is PMI, private mortgage insurance? According to Freddie Mac, quote, PMI is an insurance policy that protects the lender if you're unable to pay your mortgage. It's a monthly fee rolled into your mortgage payment that is required for all conforming conventional loans that have down payments less than 20%. Once you've built equity of 20% in your home, you can cancel your PMI and remove that expense from your mortgage payment, unquote. As mentioned earlier, when you put down less than 20% when buying a home, your lender will see your loan as having more risk. PMI helps them recover their investment in you if you're unable to pay your loan. The insurance isn't required if you're able to put down 20% or more. Many times, home sellers looking to move up to a larger or more expensive home are able to take the equity they earn from the sale of their house to put down 20% on their next home. With the equity homeowners have today, it creates a great opportunity to put those savings toward a 20% or greater down payment on a new home. If you're looking to buy your first home, you want to consider the benefits of 20% down versus a smaller down payment option. The bottom line, if you're thinking of buying a home and are already saving for your down payment, you would be shocked at how many times you find, or we find, that people are qualified well before they ever think they are. So they think that they're not qualified, they're really qualified to buy a new home, and they've been sitting there waiting for some unknown reason. That's the Real Time Real Estate segment again, brought to you by the Area Trusted Real Estate Professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text SLT Home Digest to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. Again, compliments of Ron Siegel Radio. So we've been chatting this morning a lot about your FICO score. So let's get back into that discussion. Uh, Some ideas on how to improve your FICO score. Well, there's a number of them. Number one, you got to check the accuracy of your credit reports. First step in improving your score is to be aware of what's on your credit history. There are three major credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, that each has its own credit report and score for you based on your credit history or what they know of your credit history. That means everyone actually has three credit scores, maybe even more. It's not unusual for there to be mistakes on a person's credit report. Even if you believe your report doesn't have any problems, it's a good idea to check it regularly. And if you think that your court report doesn't have any problems, uh, you better check it even more because I've never, ever seen a credit report. And I look at lots of them. I've never seen a credit report that's completely accurate. Checking your credit reports from each of the three main credit reporting agencies is easy. Under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, you have the right to obtain a free copy of all three credit reports once per year. Right now, under the CARES Act from, from covid Most of them are giving you one a month if you want. Free reports can be accessed on the government-mandated site operated by the big three credit bureaus, annualcreditreport.com, annualcreditreport.com. You can also check your credit through myfico.com. I tell you that all the time, myfico.com. They're the best service, I believe. So 
check them out. If you find an error, and you will, you'll have to file a separate dispute with each credit bureau since they're run separately from one another. If there are multiple errors on your credit reports, you'll need to dispute each of those individually. And that's where you might want to talk to a credit repair company. Jeff Sipes, Blue Water Credit, is the go-to man for Moronsega Radio. And again, I don't get paid from him. He just helps a lot of people that we, we forward his way. Again, Jeff Sipes and his team at Blue Water Credit. Number two, pinpoint what you need to improve if all the items on your credit report are correct, but you still have a poor credit score. Why? So here are the major credit scoring factors. We talked about those a little bit earlier. Payment history. I find many, many times that somebody's had a credit card, and it shows right up on the, on the report that they've had it for five, six, seven years, but it says it's only reporting for 47 months. I wonder why that would be. Well, the reason why that is is because the bureaus make more money when your score is lower, my opinion. Actually, I know they do because what do you what do, what do you, the credit card companies, do they want to buy credit reports from the guy with the 800 score or the guy with the 600 score? They can charge more interest on the lower score, so this, the bureaus then sell more, more of them. So we talked about the components of your score. You need to look at the payment history, the amount of debt, the age of the accounts, the mix, all that good stuff. Are they reporting correctly? If not, dispute them. Don't hit the dispute button on, the, on their sites. That's a chicken way for them to, to manipulate you. So what you really want to be doing is sending in a letter a specific way. If you want that information, give me a call at 800-306-1990. I'll help you with it. But we're going to get back to some more of the ways to improve your credit score. When we come back, you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. That will be the entire next segment is we're going to continue our ways of how to improve your credit score. You can reach me anytime off your number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. No longer on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. But if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three-minute complimentary survey, and the area-trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call Ron Siegel at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no-obligation mortgage adoption plan. You be the judge if it's right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to map at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporation and MLS 217037 and decal BRE number 01869452. Are you paying rent because you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you paying rent because you don't believe you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? At Siegel Lending Team at RonIsMyLender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at RonIsMyLender.com. Again, RonIsMyLender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037. RonIsMyLender.com. 
Do you believe Southern California real estate is a great investment? Are you a little short to be a cash investor? Are you missing the social security card or tax returns? The Siegel Lending Team has the loans for you. Common Sense Lending is back. Yes, there's a cost to higher risk, but the reward can be great. Call today for details. 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Great subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations. NMLS 217037 and DRE number 1869452. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate below 3.5% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $300,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,300 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L, LendingTeam.com. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed to NMLS ID 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Segal Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Segal Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990, your credit matters segment, brought to you by my favorite lender.net. And my favorite lender.net, they've got all the information for you. Go right on there. We're going to continue our conversation, how to improve your credit score. Well, we got through a couple of items in the last segments, and I hope you didn't miss those, but you can get them, ronsegalradio.com, ronsegalradio.com. Number one was check the accuracy of your credit report. Number two, pinpoint what needs to improve. Number three, fix your late payments. Keeping on top of payments and avoiding delinquency is the only way to stop a past due payment from affecting your credit score. Even closing an account won't make your overdue payments disappear. They're still there. The credit reporting agencies don't remove these items, but you may be able to talk to a creditor into doing so. One late payment can be forgiven by creditors if you have a history of on-time payments and you call to discuss it with them. Repeated delinquencies, that might require a little more effort on your part to be removed. Often, creditors will remove the negative mark from your credit report if you call and work something out with them. You'll need to get up to date on your payments and may be required to make a number of on-time payments before the mark is removed. But once it is, it may impact your credit score and the future may make sure make sure you pay your bills on time. Just a, a, an aside here, one of the rabbit trails that I go down. There's nothing that's required to be on your credit report. But anything that is on your credit report must be complete. It must be accurate, and it must be verifiable. If it is not complete, accurate, and verifiable, it must be removed. So just think about that. So another way to improve your credit score, getting added as an authorized user on the account of a friend or family member with a solid credit history can help raise your credit score. While you don't actually need to use the other person's credit or account, their positive credit and payment history are added to your credit reports and make you look better by default. Number five, clear any outstanding collection agent accounts. Contacting your creditors about making paying off your debt is a great way to raise your credit score. Make sure that you agree to remove the negative hit to your credit report if you pay it in full and get that in writing. Don't believe anybody. Get it in writing. Number six, open a secured credit card. Opening a secured credit card can help raise your credit score. This type of card involves you depositing money into a checking account to secure the line of credit the lender is extending to you. Payments come directly out of this account, so you can't miss a payment. And because you can't miss a payment and make all your payments on time, your credit score could improve over time. Number seven, dispute credit inquiries. Most credit inquiries are hard inquiries. This means they may impact your credit score. In fact, a hard inquiry stays on your credit report for a year. While each individual hit is relatively small, that can push you over the edge from one credit score tier to one below it. What's more, 
several hard inquiries over a short period of time can drop your score a lot. Like any other negative factor on your credit report, you can dispute your credit inquiries. If you didn't approve the inquiry into your credit, you may be able to get it removed. This could easily increase your credit score, but only slightly. Number eight, maintain revolving balances. If you carry a large amount of debt in relationship to your available credit, your score can suffer. In fact, credit utilization accounts for 30% of your credit score. So if your total credit card available credit is 10,000, you're using 8,000 of it, pay down those balances and increase your score. Keeping your utilization at around 30% is recommended. That'd be 3,000 on that 10,000. And if you missed the correct way to pay your credit card, I talked about it earlier in the broadcast. Go back and listen to it. It's on ronsegalradio.com. Ronsegalradio.com. Go into the archives. Probably posted by about, oh, usually they're posted by about 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Increase your credit limits. If staying at 30% credit utilization ratio mark is difficult for you, there's always the possibility of having your credit limit increased. If you have a good payment history and have improved your credit since opening the account, most creditors will consider increasing your maximum. This quickly improves your credit utilization and can raise your score. By improving your credit score, you open up a whole new world of purchasing power. You might no longer need to worry about being approved for that home vehicle or other items that you need to take the next step in your life. Never give give up on your credit. By following some of the stuff I talked to you about already today, your scores could be improved. And the strategy that I share with many, many people, I hear so many people say, well, I don't want to have any credit, Ron. Hogwash. You've got credit. You don't pay in advance, most people anyway. You're not paying in advance for your cell phone bill. You're paying your uh, utilities, gas, electric, water, cable, internet. All of those things are paid. You know, they're, they're, we, we pay for them on credit. So here is the strategy. Get a different credit card for each one of those items. And as I shared before, continually ask for the limit. Once a year, every six months, ask them to increase the credit limit. Now, you might say, I don't want to use it, Ron. Okay, fine. Take the credit cards, put them in the back of your sock drawer, put them in the freezer. I don't care where you put them. But you've got to keep them active. So how do you do that? Well, go to your utilities. Go to your electric bill and take credit card one and set up an auto pay on your electric bill. Set up an auto pay on credit card two for your cell phone bill. Set up an auto pay three for your gas bill. Set up auto pay on a credit card four for your internet bill. Maybe you're going to set up an auto pay on on a card for your car insurance to pay that monthly. Get them all on auto pay on the credit cards. That way those items are never late. And we know about what they are. You probably know what your cell phone bill is every month. You probably know roughly what your electric bill is every month, your gas bill, your, your, your uh, um, internet bill or cable bill. Go into your bank and make an auto payment for each one of those so you're never late on them. So if you know that your electric bill is going to run you $150 a month, put it on credit card one, go into your bank and send an auto pay the day after that normally comes to you for $150. So you're still only sending out one check, But that credit card is always active, and it's always paid off, so your utilization is low. So now you've got three, four, five credit cards that are all being used all the time, all current, all being paid, and it helps out your score over time. It's not going to happen overnight, but you do that, and it'll happen over time. And if you continue doing that, well, the inquiries are going to fall off because you didn't, you didn't have new credit cards and generally they'll after a year or so they'll look at your utilization they'll say that you know you're using the card you're paying it off you're a good credit risk so they start going and they continue to increase your credit that's what we're looking to do is get them to increase your credit and if they continue increasing your credit your utilization drops your activity your history continues to grow so think about what I just what I said at the very top of the broadcast today. So if you think about your credit and you look at the 
the the credit mix or the items that are on there, right? And I told you that 35% of your score comes from your credit history, 30% comes from your amount owed, and 15% comes you from your length of credit. Uh, that's about 80% of your score right there. And I just gave you a strategy to work on that 80%, to maximize that 80% of your score. Now, a real FICO score is going to run from 350 to 850, about approximately. It's a 500 point spread. And if we think about 80% of that 500 point spread, that's 400 points on top of the 350 base. That's 750, right? So that's 750 points, 750 FICO. That's going to be as good as anybody's going to have. Now, I mean, those people are going to have higher, but you really don't need anything higher than 750, 760. That's where they, the maximum break point is for most of your mortgages and autos and whatnot. Some ideas there for you on credit from your friends at Ron Siegel Radio. And as always, I ask you, Set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Segal Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to John and Sean who are engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Segal Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. Or ronsegalradio.com. And remember... Make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.